if goods move from one customs union into another, when they move from one jurisdiction on the island of Ireland into another, then there has to be some border checks. So, so, so we have to prevent that from happening. Uh, and we are happy to talk to the British government about ways in which they think they can achieve that. But in the absence of that agreement, we're very clear on the default, and the EU is very clear on the commitment that was given by the British government in December, which is in the absence of a political agreement on an option A or an option B, that the default position is that Northern Ireland would uh, essentially ensure that there isn't a border with the Republic of Ireland by maintaining the uh, 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 alignment with the rules of the customs union and single market. Now, that of course creates problems for, for the United Kingdom's single market between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom. And so we want uh, a more comprehensive solution that can solve all of these problems, but at the moment it's very difficult to see how that can work. Uh, unless the British government changes its approach uh, towards a future relationship with both the single market and customs union, which uh, so far they haven't been willing to do. Deputy Prime Minister, you know, how are negotiations otherwise going? And is there any likelihood that we could see some kind of semblance of, of a finalisation of a transition deal by the March summit? Well, I, I think that, um, that both sides are very anxious, as indeed Ireland are, uh, to, uh, to try and get a, a clarity around transition. There's a lot of pressure coming from businesses in the UK on the British government to, to try to get clarity in relation to that transition arrangement. And what's likely to happen there uh, is that the rules uh, that are currently in place within the European Union will apply in Britain for that period of time um, uh, so that people uh, and businesses aren't going to be asked to change twice, once for a transition arrangement and then once for a more permanent future relationship. Um, and so uh, that is the first thing that I hope uh, the negotiating teams will be able to get agreement on uh, in the coming weeks and months so that then we can move on to a, um, what's called a withdrawal treaty, uh, which we have a draft of now from the EU side, but more importantly we can start to negotiate what the future relationship can look like. Uh, and hopefully from an Irish perspective and indeed from an EU perspective, we want that future relationship to be as close as possible to the status quo um, so that we can maintain the very strong trading relationship that we have with the United Kingdom but that the EU has with the United Kingdom as well. Um, I think that makes sense. Uh, but let's wait and see how these negotiations develop because they are complex.